Building a SaaS product is no small feat. And when you start trying to land larger and larger customers, the list of requirements gets even longer. In this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to add audit logging and log streams, two features that are going to be high in demand when you start looking at those six-figure SaaS contracts. We're going to use WorkOS to build it. Huge thanks to WorkOS for sponsoring this video. I'm Jason Langsdorf. Let's learn something new. All right, so our first step is to get this Node Express audit log event stream work OS repo cloned down from the Learn with Jason org. I have done that here. And inside, we are going to set up our environment variable. So these, if you worked through my previous videos on SSO and Skim, these will already be set. And you can just start from the end of the Skim video to continue building here. If you haven't gotten these before, you're going to set up a WorkOS account, get the API key and the client ID out of your WorkOS settings. The redirect URL should be set to this for this app. Your org ID is whatever org you create. And then if you set up skim, you're going to need this directory ID and webhook secret. And then the session secret is anything you want. So, you know, you can just call it like super secret or whatever. Then once you've got those set, you are going to make sure you've NPM installed everything. And once you've got your dependencies installed, we can start this thing up. So we can do npm run dev, and that'll open up localhost 3000. And this lands us on our demo app, and we have the ability to log in, which is going to take us through the SSO workflow, bring us into a dashboard where we have the ability to create a new post, or we can delete existing posts, we can look at our team members, and that's what's happening here. So what we need to do is add audit logging. So the way that that is going to work is we need to start tracking events that match up with each of these things that is being done in the app. So the login, the log out, inviting somebody or creating or deleting a post. So the way this works is we need to send an event to our audit logging service that will track what happened and who did it whenever something important happens inside of our app. So we're gonna be using the work OS version of this, which includes five key pieces. We need the actor, we need the action, the context, the targets, and when it occurred. So the actor is who did the thing. So this can be a user, it also might be a system. Then we have the action, which is what somebody did. These are arbitrary, they're just, they need to be unique. Then we have the context, so we can send the location, which would be somebody's IP address if we can get it, or the user agent uh, of their browser, just to help us pinpoint, you know, who did this, where were they, et cetera, et cetera. And then targets is an array, which can be anything that the action was done to. So the user, if I log in, I've logged into my user account, and so we want my user to be affected, right? And then if I'm on a team, I've also logged into this team, so we can track it against that. So the user and the team, that allows the IT admins later on to filter down these events based on what was affected. So show me everything that's ever happened to this user. Show me everything this team has ever done. Uh, show me everything that's ever happened to this post, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, the occurred at is just the time that the event occurred. So nice and straightforward, but this is a little bit cumbersome. So what we're going to be looking to do is design something that makes it so that most of this data is configured inside of our Express app so that we don't need our developers to provide all of this information, this big old object, every single time they log something. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Our first step is we are going to create a new file. So if we open up the Explorer, we are going to create middleware. So let's create a folder call it middleware. And inside, we're going to create a new file called auditlogging.js. And inside that, let's add our code. So first thing we do is we create a new instance of the work OS object. And then we're going to export some middleware called audit logging middleware because helpful names help developers know what the heck is going on inside of your app. This is a standard piece of express middleware. So it takes the request, the response, and this next function. We're going to do our best to get the IP address and user agent out of the headers. You might need to adjust these to match your own setup, whether you're using Nginx or so on. Then we attach a new method to the request object that we're going to call log. Now you might want to double check that nobody's using this already and maybe you want to namespace it. You can do whatever you want. There are no rules. Probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay. This is going to be the function that actually gets called. And inside what we're going to do is make sure that we've got a valid user session. And if not, we bail. Now, theoretically, we shouldn't be able to get here because of the way that the session middleware is set up. But just in case, let's log so that somebody can find that, in fact, this impossible state has become possible. 
Then we're gonna grab out the user's ID. We're gonna use their IDP ID, which is the identity provider. Um, in this case, it would be Okta, but that's because my gut says that the IT team is going to use this identity provider ID as like the source of truth for a user. So we're gonna use this one instead of any other ID. And then we wanna grab any groups that this user belongs to. And if none is provided, we can just send this missing. Now, again, this shouldn't technically ever happen because we are syncing groups uh, using the directory sync feature, but just in case, we'll make sure that it's not empty. Next up, we build default targets. So in this app, we're gonna attach every event to the user target and to every group they're a part of as a target. And then we can add additional targets depending on what someone is working on. Next, we build out that object. So we have our action. The action gets sent in as one of the options to this log method. Then the actor will be configured out of the session data using that user's ID. We just grab the current date timestamp for when it occurred. The targets, we use the default targets and then add any that were provided by the developer just by concatenating those to the default target array. And then finally, we add the context using the IP address if we got it and the user agent if we got it. And once we've attached this dot log method, we're going to hit this next function to move on to whatever happens next in our request chain. So to use this, open up the index file in the source folder and import that audit logging middleware that we just created from the new file. With that imported, we're going to come down here and we want this to happen after the session is created and before the actual routes are created. So we'll stick it right here. Save that. And now every route has access to this rec.log, which means we can actually start sending audit logging events. Now, another thing we need to do here is we need to make sure that we have the right details in our session. So as you can see here, where it's currently configured is to have the user ID from the app, but we wanna make sure that we've got that identity provider ID, and then we also need to get any groups that the, the user is a member of. So right out of the gate, we can grab the IDP ID out of the profile, which we already have. And then to get the groups, we're gonna have to do a little bit more digging. So first we're gonna use the WorkOS directory sync list users method out of that node SDK to to get everybody in the current directory. Now we've saved this directory ID from the previous tutorial on skim. So again, if you wanna go back to that video, you can see how this was created. And then once we've got that data, we're going to find the user whose IDP ID matches the currently logged in user's IDP ID. And that gives us our directory user. And once we have that directory user, we can come down here to the bottom and add a new groups property on the user. And that is going to be an array of just the group IDs. All we need is the IDs. So we're going to strip these objects down and only return the data that we need. So at this point, we've got the data that we need in the session and we've attached our audit logging middleware, but we need to define our events first in WorkOS before we start actually sending them or we're gonna get an error. So let's head to the browser. To create these events, head over to your organization details and you can see here that when you scroll down, the audit logs are here, but we're seeing no events received. So the next thing we need to do is go to configuration and then we're gonna go into audit logs hit this create event button, and then we're going to set up a user.logout. And down here, we want to connect this to user and team. And if it's the first time that you're adding these, it's not gonna show you any dropdowns. You're gonna have to type and then hit enter, and then it will create them and make them selectable for other events in the future. Now, once you've saved this event and gone through and set up all the ones that we need, so you can see here, we've got a user.logout, which is gonna target the user and team, user.invite, also user and team, and user.login, with the user and team. And then for posts, we have a create and a delete, all of which use the user post and team. So the post is the, the main difference in the target for those post.create and post.delete. Once these are created, we can actually start sending log events. So let's go ahead and add those calls into our code base. So inside of our routes slash API.js, we're going to update the invite slash ID and delete post slash post ID. So whenever you invite a new user, we wanna log that. So we're gonna include an action called user.invite and we're gonna add another target for the user that was invited. So that is the ID here. We're gonna make sure that's a string and drop that in as a third target. Next for deleting posts, we want to add right up at the top a log call for the post.delete and this this time we're going to include the post target. So we're going to grab that post ID out of the params again, make sure that it's a string and attach that. And otherwise things just continue as usual. So we can do the same thing in our routes slash auth.js under where we set up the session. Let's add in a rec.log for the user.login. 
Then on the logout, we're going to make this async, and then we're going to add in another log call for the user.logout action. And our very last one here is we're going to open up the dashboard routes. So in this new route for the post one specifically, we need to make sure that we are returning the ID. And then down here, we're going to do a rec.log and add that post target again using that new ID that was just created so that we can track this post creation against the post that was created. Save that. Okay, so back in the app, we can now do these actions and expect them to show up in the audit log. So let's log in. Let's go to our team. Let's invite somebody, go to our dashboard. We'll create a new post. Then we can delete that post. And finally, we can log out. And now if we head back to our audit log, we can see that we've got a login. We've got an invite, a post create, a post delete, and a user logout. And if we click into one of these, we can see that the targets includes our current user, any groups that the user is part of, and which post was acted on for a post.create. And if it's a user.invite, we can see that it's the current user, my groups, and also the user that was invited using the directory user ID, which will be correlatable by the IT team if they need to. That's really it. That's how audit logging works. You can add as many or as few of these events as you need to. Getting audit logs is super useful, but no team really wants to add yet another dashboard they need to check. So to take this even further and make it really helpful for the teams that have to monitor these logs, we also want to set up log streaming. So what this does is it allows us to take any audit log events that come in and stream them to a security incident and event management provider. That means that the team that's keeping track track of this stuff has all of their events in one place and they can set up all the management stuff and dashboards and any other things they need without having to worry about which dashboard they're looking at. It's all in one place. So to configure this, you can come right in here and hit this configure manually. There's Amazon S3, Datadog or Splunk available. And for each of these, if you save the connection and then come in here, it's going to give you the details that you need to provide for this to work. So your account ID, region, role name, bucket name and bucket path for S3 or for Datadog, you just need an API key. And in Splunk, you get a URL and an event collection token. Whichever one you use, as soon as you've updated those details, those events will start streaming in directly from the audit log. As companies grow, features like log streams and audit logging are gonna play larger and larger roles in whether or not a team decides to adopt your product. So it might not be that exciting to implement features like this, but you know what is exciting? cashing a six-figure check when you land that contract. So thanks again to the WorkOS team for sponsoring this tutorial. Happy building, friends.